ESPN Classic thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League. It's uh -huh. fun. It is the acquisition. You know, when when I when I got this helmet, your heart was beating fast. Boy, yeah, it was great. We've got uh, got a Philadelphia Bell jersey, have a, uh, a Florida Blazers jersey worn by Tommy Reeman, probably in that photograph we just looked at. Ron Curl's Chicago Winds jersey. Got Charlie Haraway's jersey he wore in the World Bowl. Man, as a 14-year-old kid, you didn't you didn't know that it was a business. I didn't. I mean, you, you knew the players were getting paid and stuff, but we thought they did it for us. Yeah, really. They were doing it, doing it for us. I think most folks, they have fond memories of it. They, they want to see it remembered in a positive light. And this is one way of doing it, to say, look, this does not belong in, you know, uh, a dumpster somewhere. I was noticing that you've got back behind us the, the World Bowl trophy from the Old World Football League. Yes, uh, Greg, that, that's uh, a, a prize that we have, uh, and I'm really not sure how we came about it. Actually, the trophy sat in a storeroom at Legion Field for 22 years until a pipe fitter found it in a box and turned it over to the Hall of Fame. Do you have a lot of people uh, coming in saying, where's that world uh, football team? <laughs> no, we don't. And many of them that come through here are actually uh, not familiar with that, as you know, because it's been 25 years ago. I'm not sure if it's an illness or if it's just uh, uh, maybe our, our calendars got stuck in the 70s or something. I don't know. You become a fan, and it's something that doesn't really go away and then as time goes on uh, you become nostalgic for your childhood and th the things that you identify with you know being happy I guess when I, when I was a kid I went to the Birmingham Florida Blazers game pouring down rain as the players were, were leaving the the field uh, a bunch of us kids reached out and you know to slap their hands and uh, Paul Robinson reached out and just slapped my hand and uh, I thought that was really neat. You know, for, for you know, a kid from Hansville, Alabama, who had never seen a pro football game before, that was a big thing. <laughs> well, we hear that this restaurant that uh, opened the last year or so that it has all this kind of stuff. You ever heard about it? Carlisle's. Carlisle's. I, I got to see this place. I got to see this place. That's a must see now. So we went to Carlisle's and found three men who met and became friends through the WFL's Birmingham Americans. The former oh, ticket oh, manager. Oh, oh, oh the kicker, and the president of the Booster Club. We had, uh, we had the largest booster club in the history of, of football. Uh, we would have maybe a 1,000 people at the, at the Hyde House, and, and it got so large we had to move from the Hyde House, we had to move to the municipal auditorium. Governor Wallace. Governor Wallace, we had him to proclaim Birmingham Americans Day for the state of Alabama. That's the actual certificate that he signed. That's the original proclamation right there that I've kept over these years that he signed. I, I'm not sure we had the most stable ownership the first year or leadership. And just cringe when you think about uh, Bill Putnam, who owned the team the first year. He chose as president of the team Carol Stallworth, who had been a barmaid here in Birmingham at a hotel. There again, I think Carol Stallworth was window dressing. Yeah. Uh, there was behind the scenes work being done. But there, I think from a prestige standpoint, we were lacking. But was that, he any good as president? We had new leadership the second year. Uh, it's, it's well, don't you think running a bar would be good experience for running a football team? Actually, it was. Carroll provided the only break from the drudgery of training camp in Marion, Alabama. Very strict atmosphere, and they didn't have any advantage to go into town and dance and things like that. So their first trip to Birmingham, we rented them a couple of buses, brought them over to Carroll Stallworth's house, and I had... 40 models from charm schools and things like that in town. 40 models meet them at the bus, and, and, and each lady would be the gentleman's, you know, escort for the night. And and it went real well. There's a swimming pool back there. We had a luau party, a dance. They had a great band. And about an hour into the party, all the lights went out. And what happened, one of the players just didn't want all the lights. So lights came on about 30 minutes later. And we couldn't find the players at first, but they started popping up. So all the players wrote me a thank you note. And I Jack bet they Goda, did. Jack Goda said, Joe, that's the only thing they've ever agreed on. That was the best party they've ever been to in their life. And he said, what's so funny is the next day they were supposed to come down to Marion for practice. He said, I had to have cabs going up down the expressway trying to find my ball players, <laughs> trying to thumb back down to Marion. But the community literally embraced our players. You think about that night? That night. And for both. <laughs> <laughs> were there any marriages that resulted from that night? That yes. party? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Just divorces. <laughs> like that party, the World Football League was fun while it lasted. But everyone woke up with a hangover and only a hazy memory of what had happened. Well, what's the real story? It's a bunch of crazy people that played a year and a half in a league with funny logo. I mean, what are you talking about, the real story? This isn't Watergate. Coming this December from Honda. Hurry up, they're going fast. During Motorola sale days at Verizon Wireless, get the coolest phones at lower prices than ever before. Get the full-color Motorola T720 with gaming capability for just $99.99 after trade-in rebate. Or get the sleek and compact Motorola V60i for just $49.99 after mail-in rebate. This sale is ending soon, so get up and get to your Verizon Wireless communication store today. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Wednesday at Zales. Take an extra 25% off, even on sale prices, like these $9.99 one carat diamond stud earrings for just $6.99. At Zales, the diamond store. Rated E for everyone. This is what it feels like when I start training threes. This is what you'll see when you bring it in my lane. what it feels like to be dunked on. This is what it feels like to play in the NBA. NBA 2K3. Sega! Nice. One day you find you're up to your waist in it. If being in it buys one more day on top of it. Fill up the top. Fill up the top. Finding printed material on the WFL, like these game programs, was fairly easy. But what we really needed was action footage and broadcast tapes. And we were told that most of that stuff was either lost or erased. So we went back to Greg and Tony. I had uh, some film that you made for me on the video and stick it in, and people would come in. Who's that? Alabama Auburn? Uh, the Birmingham Americans, nobody knew who I was talking sure. about. But I'd sit there and watch it for hours. I'd lock the door and watch sure. it for hours, you know, and grainy film of somebody you don't remember hardly. Well, I don't Basically, remember. it was all black and white. Yeah, just black and white. You can't, you can't You're rewinding you World Football League film from 27 uh -huh. years ago. This was 16-millimeter film shot off a screen with a camcorder. That's the Philadelphia Bell and the Charlotte Hornets, I think. You can see what's going on, but uh, it isn't exactly broadcast quality. Then, we came across this film from a rookie talent show at the Birmingham training camp in 1974. Now, we're on to something. We figure the guy who shot this must have more footage in his basement somewhere. We just had to find him. And we did. His name is Louis Bice, and he's video director for the University of Alabama Birmingham football team. 25 years ago, Lewis was on another kind of tower, in the press box at Legion Field. That's his wife and daughter heading to their seats. Lewis shot the games, processed and printed the film, then packaged the highlights. The footage here was shot to grade the players and to see what, what they needed to improve on for the next game. This was used to take to the next town as promo film. The sports information director would, would cut the highlights out and make a 100-foot roll, uh, po possibly out of the highlights. He'd take it to the next town that we were playing in to the TV stations, and they'd try to drum up interest in the World Football League that way. The problem was most of the best stuff from those TV highlights never made it back into the original reel, so it was lost but there was still enough left to show you just how well Lewis covered the action. There's George Myra, the ex-49er, getting clotheslined by the Florida Blazers. 
And there's Charlie Haraway, who started for the Redskins in Super Bowl VII. Lewis was down on the sidelines, risking his camera and his body to get the shot, just like our guys do today. This is a Bell and Howell, and it first came out as a combat camera in World War II, and it was a 100-foot camera, just this part of it, and you wound it on the side with a spring wind, uh, but it was durable, and uh, we could use that with a 100-foot load. 100 feet of film lasts 2 minutes and 41 seconds at 24 frames per second. So at 64 frames, you had just about a minute. So it was constantly changing film. And of course, we missed some. And uh, you'd miss some while you were threading, re reloading. We did run out quite frequently. If you got a 40-yard run, you, you might only have 38 yards of film. But that was the best thing going at that time. We use 400-foot magazines today, so we rarely miss a big play. 25 years ago, it was harder with the short rolls, but Lewis still got what we call the money shots. You know, I wish I'd known him back then. We would have hired him in a second. He also knew how to work the sidelines in the bench area to capture the personalities and the drama. He covered the news as well, like the 1974 championship game when the league presented the MVP award to three players. It was a ceremony that defined the WFL a league that was sinking in red ink by the end of that first year. When the, the time came to actually present them with the money, as opposed to giving them a check like you normally see with a ceremonial large check, and then you give them the real thing later on, they opted not to take the check. They said, we don't like the history and the track record that you've had with your checks, so we prefer you to bring us cash. I think really that, that they wanted to excite the people with the volume of the money out there because I, if I remember right, it was all in one dollar bills. In the, in the photograph, you have Alex Hawkins, who is one of the TVS commentators, along with uh, Tony Adams, who was one of the tri-MVPs for the Southern California Sun, and Miss Florida. So why she came up for the World Bowl, but we can't find Miss Alabama, we're not sure. But uh, afterward, then he reaches over and plants a kiss on Miss Florida, and then uh, not sure whether that was planned or not, but uh, he got his money, he got his kiss, and so he got out. Take a closer look at Miss Florida. Talk about a lost treasure. That's Delta Burke, who went on to become a TV star. But she was a designing woman even then. If we could ever find the TVS broadcast, the actual broadcast of, I mean, obviously the World Bowl would be, be the big find, but any TVS broadcast. I hold in my hand the ultimate lost treasure of the WFL. A fourth generation copy of a copy of the first national TV broadcast. The network taped over the original, so don't adjust your set. Ignore the static and the rolling picture. This is TV history, so you take what you can get. Live and in color, TBS presents the new game in town, the World Football League. The first week's crowds were pretty good, and we're even where we were in Jacksonville for the opening game, 40,000 or something. Philadelphia opened with about 55,000, and everybody was very encouraged. Hi, I'm Earl Herman, and welcome to the new game in town, the World Football League. Last night at approximately 8.08 .08 p.m., this football was kicked off in Orlando, Florida, launching the start of the WFL. Tommy Durrance, the former Florida star for about three. Tommy Durrance, uh, yes, as we were saying. That's colorful. <laughs> nice crowd here tonight. Those are the morales, incidentally, a group of Jacksonville girls, that shot you just saw there. We went to this celebrity third person in the booth, and we had McLean Stevenson and Burt Reynolds and uh, a few others that knew their football, that played football, and they were now entertainment celebrities. But really, there hasn't been that much of a surprise, has there? It's been, uh, I mean, what, what is it, what, I should ask you this, is there anything that surprised you? I learned once again how hard it is to start up a league, even with maximum exposure. Next Thursday night, Portland at Memphis, and we'll be there to bring it to you, 9 p.m. Very vulnerable in football, because football was dealing with all three networks at the time, and you can't get one of the big networks to jump with you, 
the USFL had the same problems because they all have an interest in the NFL. Delighted to have you with us tonight from the beautiful Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. So I don't think you'll see any new leagues in the major sports ever again. Let's pause for station identification. This is the TVS Television Network. James Bond knows exactly how he likes things to be done. The setup of his car. The equipment he uses. The cut of his tuxedo always catches a woman's eye. And which setting he prefers on his Norelco Spectra. And James Bond always gets what he wants. The new Norelco Spectra. Bond's razor of choice. Set for comfort. Listerine pocket pack strips have the power to destroy germs. The power to crush germs. And the power to eliminate over 99% of germs on contact. Because when you kill the germs, you get an incredible clean mouth feeling. Cool mint Listerine pocket packs. Kill the germs. Feel the clean. Wednesday on ABC. Get ready for the music event of the year. Oh my Paul McCartney brings the music of the Beatles to life. And ABC is giving you a front row seat and a backstage pass for rock and roll's greatest living legend. Yes, Two hours of the music of Paul McCartney. Back in the U.S. Wednesday, 9, 8 central on ABC. Now, youth players and coaches can learn football from the NFL with the Junior Player Development Interactive DVD Kit. To register to get your kit, go to NFLYouthFootball.com. How long has it been since you've been to the dentist? Uh, 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 uh about a... Uh, about a year. Mm, at least. At least. Three years. Five years! Five years! Okay, I confess, I used to be afraid of the dentist, too. Not the drill. The bill. See, I don't have dental coverage. Talk about scary. So I joined the People's Dental Plan, a discount program that saves me money every time I come. Look, I just saved eighty dollars. Fear no more. Join the People's Dental Plan. One low membership fee is all it takes to get the People's Dental Plan guarantee. Show this card at a participating dentist near you and save twenty to fifty percent or more on virtually all dental treatments, checkups root canals, crowns, braces, even cosmetic treatments. There are no claim forms, just on-the-spot savings, and your whole household's covered. Come back to the dentist and save. Call 1-800-593-8228 for free information on the People's Dental Plan. Call now. Curiosity, you might notice, who are the only two guys in the history of professional football in America who played, owned, and coached pro football team all at the same time. I would say George House will be the one, but uh, the second one doesn't exactly come to mind. Yeah, John Wilbur. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I've known John Wilbur for 30 years, but it wasn't until we interviewed him last summer for another show that I found out that he played and coached and was a part owner of a WFL team in Hawaii. So I got a chance to, you know, coach at the professional level, and it was wasn't quite the NFL, but it was, you know, two-thirds of the NFL. You know, the quality of the talent. A lot of the players ended up in the NFL. There were two kinds of players in the WFL. Those on the way out and those on the way up. Alfred Jenkins was a young receiver who showed promise with Birmingham and then blossomed into an all-pro with the Atlanta Falcons. Jack Dolben played for the Chicago Fire before starting in a Super Bowl with Denver. Today, he is a chiropractor. I had the opportunity to try out, and I showed up one day at Soldier Field. I remember I borrowed my wife's contacts. I couldn't see, and I didn't have any money. I was working as a store detective with J.C. Penney, and uh, of 160 players, they signed four of us, and I was one of them. Wyatt was right with Jack Dalvin, the flanker. Uh, that team folded, and I ended up back at J.C. Penney's chasing shoplifters. Chasing dreams is what Vince Papali did. Before Vince made the Philadelphia Eagles as a 30-year-old free agent, he played for the Philadelphia Bell, 
where the coaches questioned his credentials. So he started asking me about myself, and he said, well, where'd you, uh, where'd you play your college football? <laughs> well, you know, I've been playing a college football coach, but I played high school football, you know. He said, well, how old are you? I was 24. So I was 28 at the time. I lied about my age. He says, um, well, what do you know about football? I said, well, I'm a defensive coordinator for my high school football team, Interbro. Vince actually caught the first pass in WFL history. We don't have that shot, but we did find a few others. <laughs> you got to be kidding. You have footage of me in the World Football League? I, I got to see that. I have to see that. There's Vince, 44, closing in on a Birmingham return day. Okay, so he took out a blocker and sacrificed himself so his teammates could make the play. Vince was that kind of guy. But keep watching. He'll be back. Vince never let up. See, there he is now, finishing off the play. <laughs> this is big time, baby. Danny White played 13 seasons with the Cowboys, but before that, he quarterbacked the Memphis Southmen. And here's a quarterback who was ahead of his time. David Mays, number 12 of the Houston Texans. He was a poor man's Dante Culpepper. Mays spent three years as a backup in the NFL. But this is such a great run, we had to put it in the show. Now here's a familiar face, Ben Davidson. Three years after retiring from the Raiders, he signed with the WFL for one last hurrah. I started at East L.A. Junior College as an amateur, and I finished uh, with the Portland Storm as an amateur. They stopped paying us. I said, I've had my career. Uh, if you guys want to stay and play, I'll stay and play. If you want to go home, I'll go home. And uh, only one guy left. Uh, an interesting phenomenon. Guys were so uh, loved playing football so much that they stayed and played. And I guess I did, too. A few others were actually in their prime. One was Virgil Carter. I was in Cincinnati. I hadn't signed a contract because I had a disagreement over the medical care from Paul Brown and the Bengals. I wanted to have my own second opinion because, you know, I'd led the league in injuries prior to that and I wanted a good second opinion. Uh, and he didn't want to give me that option, so I hadn't signed. Two months later, a guy named Tom Orger calls from Chicago and says that he's starting a new league, a new team, wants to talk to me, and certainly I was available to sign because I was on my option here. Virgil Carter, the man who was Renegade. <laughs> yeah, I was the first NFL player under contract to sign in the new league. But not the last. The WFL rated the NFL for named players. Calvin Hill left the Cowboys, and Ted Qualick left the 49ers, and both signed with the Hawaiians. Ken Stabler signed with Birmingham, and Darryl LaMonica traded the silver and black of Oakland for the pastel shades of the Southern California sun. But the biggest blow to the NFL was the defection of three marquee players who helped Miami win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. I think we're all more interested in staying with the Miami Dolphins rather than going to a new league. Uh, but we needed a bargaining chip or some leverage to, to deal with the Miami Dolphins. We were in a situation where we were making $50,000 a year, which was a good salary for the NFL back then. And we're offered an opportunity to make three and a half million dollars over two and a half years. That's why I left the Miami Dolphins. Larry at the time just came off the MVP and was certainly a, a big name and I guess getting Paul Warfield, the greatest receiver ever, in my opinion, in the NFL. Uh, whether I was the caboose or not, I don't know. It was something new for me and I like, I like uh, taking chances and, and adventurous things. Ironically, the three Dolphins didn't make much of a splash on the field. The caviar and champagne boys were treated rudely by the blue-collar guys in the new league. Zonka Kick and Warfield came in here with Memphis, and I think I think y'all held uh, Zonka to like 20, 30 yards rushing. Larry Zonka did not dominate. Uh, Jim Kick, Paul Warfield. They... I think I held him. You know, I think I got him behind the line about three or four times. Which one? <laughs> just Zonka. teasing, just not... teasing. Yeah, I yeah. got him. I hit him. When the league folded, we played one last game for the fans. And our two quarterbacks quit, Rico Casada and Sonny Sixkiller, because they weren't getting their quarterback salaries. We had a team meeting. Everybody gets up and says, okay, no pay, no play. No pay, no play. All right. 
we get up and do the old deal, take a vote, okay. Next day, two guys didn't show up for the practice. Myself and Rick Casada, we lived together. We were the two quarterbacks. We didn't really get in cahoots. We thought everybody else was with us. Got Tim Fossil on the line. He was selling air conditioners in Utah, and he came over to, to be our quarterback. He actually threw the last pass in the, as a player in the World Football League. Tim Fossil did. When I went to work in the air conditioning business, I found I was spending the same amount of hours, and I hated it. If I'm going to spend this kind of time, I want to do something I like. And you find guys that are that are doing this because they love it and they want to play football and they they kind of bond together. Really, truly, guys were playing for the love of the game. If you loved football, you would have loved this league. But for guys like me, this was my NFL. And for a lot of guys that had these dreams of playing the big times, this was as big as it got. So uh, there was no downgrade. This this was good stuff. It was pure. It was just great football. I got it. No matter what changes in your life, there are two things you can count on for 10 years. And one of them comes with loads of standard features and five years of roadside assistance. 2003 Kia Spectra. Now get up to 1500 cash back or 0% financing on 2003 Spectras. For those who love to bash. Gash. Smash. And crash. There is Rygar. Unleash your devastating disc armor for a Greco-Roman reality break. Rygar, the joy of destruction. Ready T for team. Tecmo, 100% games. Listen, this deal sounds too good to be true. Are you trying to set us up? We've made some deals before. But this? This can't be legal. How big and tasty for just one dollar? McDonald's dollar menu. Lots of choices, one dollar each every day, including sandwiches like the tender, big and tasty, or juicy McChicken. Turn your dollar into something tasty. Is this some kind of racket? I don't care who your daddy is. I don't care what the last coach promised you. Now we're going to work. He turned boys well, that's how it's done. into players. You damn near killed my friend. He ain't quitting. He turned players. He won the fame without the sweat. Into champions. Not in this team. Tom Berenger as Paul Bear Bryant. The Junction Boys. Saturday, December 14th, 9 p.m. on ESPN. The World Football League was the brainchild of one man, Gary Davidson. He had created two other leagues, the American Basketball Association and the World Hockey Association. Now, those leagues failed over time, but a few of the franchises were successful enough to merge with the NBA and the NHL. The WFL vanished without a trace, but it did get off to a promising start. You know, the World Football League is bringing you new dimensions and excitement in pro football, and now let's meet the man who's made it all possible, the founder and commissioner of the WFL, Mr. Gary Davidson. And, Commissioner, I know you must be tremendously pleased at the great enthusiasm uh, which has been accorded the WFL games to date last night and tonight by the hundreds of thousands of fans across the country. Well, Merle, being pleased is an understatement. I'm overwhelmed. I'm awed. I'm having a hard time realizing how successful our openings have been. I think the World Football League was the best deal I ever did. I mean, as far as management, uh, as far as concept, uh, financing was better, but it was the wrong time. It's a high-risk venture. Basically, we create a concept and we sell parts of it. So you sell a dream. You, you know, your guy doesn't want to be known as a Bazir manufacturer. He wants to be known as the owner of a sports franchise. We would go into a city, and I had a, I had an advanced guy, and he'd call, he'd call a, the uh, newspapers and say, uh, we're interested in putting a franchise in, in Indianapolis. Uh, we think that John Doe owns the biggest brick factory here. We'll be interested. Now, John Doe doesn't know anything about this. So then we call John Doe and say, Joe, John Doe, are you interested in buying a franchise? And he said, no, I don't want to have a football franchise. Then we call the paper and say, John Doe's not interested. The paper doesn't call John Doe. 
and say, aren't you interested? Well, he said, well, I, I might be, because he'd never been called by the sport department before. Then, I, then I'd go see him and talk to him, and I'd say, oh, look, in the press conferences, be sure you watch the cameras, and, and, and this, that's the main reporter to talk to. And all of a sudden, he, now John Doe is buying into the concept. Well, that concept didn't exist a week before. In America, they love sports. And so we, we, we packaged it and sold it. We had people calling us from all over the country. Now they're trying to find out about the league. When Ron Mix learned of the new league, he had completed a Hall of Fame playing career and was legal counsel for the San Diego Chargers. But the lure of the game drew him back as part owner and general manager of the Portland Storm. I figured, well, why not take a shot at this? I mean, if they're right, then it's kind of like the jackpot, and I get to stay on in something that I really do love. And so I took the job. And as I look back on my life, that's one of the things I wish I had not done, of course, but we've all got those decisions. But it was the right decision at the time. It was the perfect climate to start a new league. It became very obvious to anybody who was following the game that the, the players uh, felt, and in fact were, in my opinion, uh, seriously underpaid in comparison to what we perceived clubs to be earning that creates the perfect time for a new league to form and take advantage of that unrest and sign a lot of unhappy players. Some entrepreneurs try to reinvent the wheel. Well, Gary Davidson tried to reinvent the football, among other things. He, he created the World Football League football, too, Gary Davidson. He um, did the original, uh, he, the promotional photos were blue stripes on it, and he, he had, told me he had that in his office. But uh, they used orange because they could see it better at night. There was a lot of different variations. He designed everything. He, he had one ball with the stripes going this way. He had another ball with the laces on both sides, so when the quarterback got it, he'd be ready to fire any time he grabbed the ball. And he helped design all these uniforms. He, he wanted them, you know, different. And this was the 70s, and they, they looked good on TV. A lot of people thought they were kind of loud, but uh, they were just different. Out on the uh, field, they're demonstrating the color-coded pants that uh, originally they had planned to use in this game tonight. <laughs> no, I wouldn't get in them. No, I was, uh, that, that, they, had these, they had these color coded pants. That, that's good research. I'm glad you got that. Uh, yeah, we had these wild striped, vertically striped pants and stuff. They were just obnoxious. And I, I, I think that was when we had 750 people there. The guys just looked like clowns. It's an idea that the players did not treat with overwhelming warmth. Partly because it's a new idea. What we were trying to do was get as much publicity as possible and throw out many ideas as possible and then hoping that we'd be on the front page of, or the back page of the sport pages every day. And in July of 1974, the new game in town opened to huge crowds. I think the people are ready to get aboard. In fact, they've proven it with all of the There were 56,000 people in the first game in Philadelphia. What no one knew until later was only 5,000 actually paid to get in. We got to the game and the stands are packed. And I remember telling my wife, Patty, oh, this is great. We made the right decision. I had my picture on the, on the cover of the program. And I looked at my wife at that time. I said, I'll never have to prove myself again. Then afterwards, we found out that they gave away the tickets at the supermarkets. <laughs> they papered the house in Philadelphia, and they'd lied about it. And everything started downhill from that point. But for a moment, I thought I was a genius. And that was the last time Patty thought I was a genius, too. It was just that uh, about a 10-second window till we found out the truth. I think it affects everybody because, you know, when people start questioning how, how your business practices are, if somebody else in the league is doing that, or are you doing that? It really did affect everybody, and I, I think it was a domino effect, and I think that's when the league really had, had their, their first major problems. I flip on the TV, and I see uh, one of the prominent Philadelphia announcers just making a mockery uh, of the league. So, you know, say what they will about the league itself, but don't say that about the athletes that were there. They were really giving it everything they could. But the players, honestly, I never heard anything about it. I, they just, once the game started, and they were, you know, they just wanted you know, to get their game checks on a regular, the Philadelphia was one of the teams that got paid every week, so they were pretty happy about that because the Florida Blazers didn't get paid. Neither did the Detroit Wheels or the Shreveport Steamer. It affected the players and their families as well. I thought he was going to lose his job, and I don't want to go back and live in New Jersey with my grandparents. We live in Kearney, New Jersey, where they film The Sopranos, the same street, Kearney Avenue, and I just hated living there, and it's just every time he got cut from a team, we'd pack up and move to New Jersey. 
bits of money would come in and we'd divide it equally among everybody. Everybody would just take a share. Then there was always a lot of wishful thinking and also a lot of representations that new money was going to come in to shore up the league. But it, it was too bad because really it was three or four weeks into the season and it looked like it was all over. The biggest turnout we had, Dave, was when it was band day and all the bands would come and sit in the stands and play and then as soon as halftime was over, they're gone and then you look around and Whoa. We had an Oscar Mayer meat company uh, promotion night, and there was 42,000 people. The next day, we get the phone call to move to Shreveport. I was used to living on a shoestring being a, being a, a student, so that wasn't a big issue to me, but I certainly saw the pain in a lot of, uh, a lot of the veterans' eyes as it, as it unfolded. And I felt bad for some of the other kids that were... A lot of guys played for free, you know? I guess it's a tough game to play for free. I think the last five games we didn't get paid for. Um, we continued to play with reservations. Um, at one time there, we were talking about, you know, maybe not playing the, the World Bowl yeah, game. The yeah, boycott to boycott the championship game here. The championship game was the best because that was, you know, the IRS allowed them to put it on. It wasn't going to be held. And then the IRS decided that a piece of the pie was better than no piece of the pie. So they conducted the game, more or less, with IRS agents around collecting the gate receipts. So there were the Birmingham Americans, who had not been paid in five weeks, about to win the World Bowl, while in their locker room, the Sheriff's Department was confiscating every piece of equipment to help pay off the team's debts. And money wasn't the object. Really, it's, it sounds strange, but it really wasn't, because that winning thing got, got to where it was pretty important. A lot of guys say they play this game for free. I don't know how many guys have played for free, but being a champion is what you play it for. Can you keep a secret? Look what I bought mommy for Christmas. Your mom gave me you? Yes, she did. This holiday, how do you thank your wife for the best Christmas ever? A K Jewelers three stone diamond necklace with free gift would be a great start. And you can be assured of two things. First, that every K diamond is hand selected for exceptional beauty. And second, that she'll absolutely love it. A little angel assured me you'd love this. The little angel was right. Every kiss begins with K. Rated E for everyone. This is what it feels like when I start draining threes. This is what you'll see when you bring it in my lane. This is what it feels like to be dunked on. This is what it feels like to play in the NBA. NBA 2K3. Sega! Hurry up, they're going fast. During Motorola sale days at Verizon Wireless, get the coolest phones at lower prices than ever before. Get the full-color Motorola T720 with gaming capability for just $99.99 after trade-in rebate. Or get the sleek and compact Motorola V60i for just $49.99 after mail-in rebate. This sale is ending soon, so get up and get to your Verizon Wireless communication store today. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Nice. One day you find you're up to your waist in it. If being in it buys one more day on top of it, fill up the tub. Fill up the tub. If you start a new league in any sport, you have to put a team in New York, the Big Apple. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. But one team that didn't make it there was the New York Stars. When the Stars came to town, they were hard-pressed to find a home. Ebbets Field and the Polo Grounds were gone. Yankee Stadium and Shea were taken. That left Downing Stadium. Located on Randall's Island in the middle of the East River, it will soon be demolished. But on a dreary day in February, we went there to visit with John Dockery. Now, you may remember John as a defensive back on the Jets' Super Bowl team. Well, when he was in high school, he played football and ran track on this field. And in 1974, he was back, briefly, playing for the New York Stars. New York City, the contrast in life. Hard to believe just five years earlier, my teammates and I were down in the middle of Manhattan. Bachelor's three, Joe Willie, all the excitement, all the energy. And then just a few years later, here we are at 
Downing Stadium, Randall's Island, New York Stars. It's ironic how life plays tricks on you. I was a defensive back. I remember playing behind Jerry Philbin, one of the toughest players ever, playing with two shoulder separations. John Elliott, one of the most athletic defensive linemen you'll ever meet. George Sauer, perhaps a receiver that retired at the height of his game. And Babe Pirelli was our coach. He was a backup quarterback for Neyman. So here we were as a group some five years later in this dingy minor league second grade stadium playing for a league and a team that was on shaky ground. It's more of an impression than anything else. I just remember it kind of being brown or dull, like an impressionistic painting. It wasn't like the Christmas or the clarity of the NFL. It was kind of like just covered by, uh, by clouds. I'm a New York guy. I grew up in Brooklyn. The Dodgers left Brooklyn, as you know. We've never forgiven them. But apparently, the lights from Ebbets Field came here to Downing Stadium, and I guess they were from the 30s. So they didn't provide a lot of candle power, <laughs> so they couldn't televise the game. So we were playing anonymously here, you know, in the middle of nowhere, uh, in New York City on an island with a few thousand people. The media center of the world. <laughs> the media yeah. center of the world. And you and, can't televise it. And we can't be on television. Maybe they had us on radio. I don't even know. And Sherman rolls to his left. He's going to throw the ball. He's going to throw it. He's going to run. He's at the 20, 25, at the 30. Bob Sherman closes that football as they pile it up there at the 35-yard line of the 40. Let's see who's got it. Wow. The mighty and the sun shines on the mighty black and about the only time it did shine. It was not exactly a happening, <laughs> to say the least. Not a lot of interviewer questions. <laughs> no, not a lot of autographs. You know, you could get in. You didn't want to shower, and I don't remember there being much hot water. They worked about the same little drip here and there. You know, things were just meager. They were tight. Everything was tight. I mean, take a look at these lockers. They aren't much different than they were some 26 years ago. And also, <laughs> heck, you might want to hold it. These uh, stalls weren't exactly the most inviting either. So if you didn't have to go badly, you wouldn't go. You'd just get out of here as fast as you could. You I think there was some feeling of that. You know, hey, how can we be expected to be at the top of our game playing in a facility like this, being treated like this? This was a drag, trying to deal with all this stuff. But you either did it or you didn't play football. And as an athlete, that's what you did. It's in your gut, it's in your blood, it's in the fabric of your being, you're going to play. No one was interested, uh, the team wasn't drawing, the owners were in financial trouble, and actually was sold and moved to Charlotte. And when we got to Charlotte, it was like brightness and light and fun and energy, and we were welcomed with open arms. And, and to have people in the stands who cared about what you were doing uh, was a huge lift for the team. Of course, we didn't win enough games to, to really support the town. We went on a losing streak at the end of the season, and that certainly affected the attendance, uh, affected survival. But you know what? When all was said and done, there were some good things about it as well. A chance to play, a chance to reunite with some of my teammates, a chance to see other parts of the country, like going to Charlotte, even though it wouldn't have been my choice. But it was part of life's journey. Coming back to the stadium, I feel a whole mixture of emotions. There were high moments, and this was certainly one of the low moments, being here at Downing Stadium and ending with the New York Stars. And as I look at this decrepit stadium now falling down, and I realize that the, the wrecking ball will be here soon, I don't know if I want to watch it. It's part of my life. I hate to see it go. Downing Stadium, where Jesse Owens ran in the 1936 Olympic trials, where Pele once played for the New York Cosmos, where generations of high school athletes ran track and played football, and where the New York Stars bid goodbye after seven forgettable games. They're going fast. During Motorola sale days at Verizon Wireless, get the coolest phones at lower prices than ever before. Get the full-color Motorola T720 with gaming capability for just $99.99 after trade-in rebate. Or get the sleek and compact Motorola V60i for just $49.99 after mail-in rebate. This sale is ending.
coming soon. So get up and get to your Verizon Wireless communication store today. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Sean Green will go down as the greatest Jewish American baseball player in history. The Miami Hurricanes would beat the Cincinnati Bengals. Best mascot? Brutus Buck. Just hit the ball already, Sergio. My older brother is Staff Sergeant Clarence Freeman of the United States Marine Corps. Since his deployment overseas for Operation Enduring Freedom, we still keep in touch while he and his shipmates defend America. You can bring other military families together this holiday season by joining the NFL and VFW in donating to Operation Uplink. Just log on to NFL.com VFW to find out how you can provide a prepaid calling card to a member of the military who would like to call home. This year, give to someone who gives you the gift of freedom every day. Five minutes, guys. The C240 sedan now with formatic all wheel drive. Disappointing kids everywhere. Welcome back to our draft day college. Yeah, we grew up on football. Oh, Miami's picking. Miami needs a nose Hey, Joy, you're going to play for Miami. Miami. When you want a new car, Nothing beats vehicles.com. It's the easy way to research nearly any kind of vehicle. They picked a receipt. It's okay, it's okay. Who's next? Minnesota. You're the place for Minnesota, Joey. Minnesota? So you can find the car that's right for you, or for where you live. vehicles.com. Roadmap to the automotive world. While researching the World Football League, we found two men in Virginia. One was a star, the other a faceless offensive lineman but they were products of a shared experience. Bob Paschal was a center and long snapper for the Philadelphia Bell. Today, he's a neurologist in Nassauatics, Virginia. My mother had MS, so I was pretty much uh, neurology bent from the beginning, but I delayed my career a little bit to enjoy the WFL. Hey, now a teacher and coach in Newport News, Tommy Riemann was a running back with the Florida Blazers and the league's co-MVP. Okay. I just kind of trusted that everything they were saying that was, it was going to be true and it was going to work out. You know, and I was a little kid that said I wanted to prove something, I want to prove in the NFL, you know, this and that, and, and I just wanted to run with the football. Tommy was the leading rusher in the WFL's only full season. But here I was, this young guy, I was eating. You know, whether I was eating McDonald's, I was fresh out of college. I may never eat at another McDonald's because of 20 years ago. We ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner at McDonald's, which is great that they gave us a, a meal ticket, you know, knowing that we had problems, you know, uh, with, with waiting for the paycheck. Some of the things that was happening to guys who were older and had families and children, you know, um, it had to be devastating. It was devastating to him because I saw many of them, uh, some of the frustration. But for me, I, I had never had any money anyway. I had a great experience on Orlando, Florida. I mean, I did. I'm, I was a kid among kids. I think I was at Disney World every night. I grew up very low-income family. I never went to those kind of parks like that. Some of the guys used to, used to tease me, but that was my outlet. You know, um, yes, we played during the week. We practice all day, and, and people go home with their families. I go to Disney World. <laughs> I often tell people when they say, when they say, uh, what was your pro football career like? I said, it was meteoric, man. Like a fast rise and a rapid burning. I was a rookie, and I thought that I was going to play in the bigs, and it was going to be really something. I was going to be on television a lot just to compete with these guys who were way bigger than me. And the only way I got in was because I was strong and fast and fierce and I didn't mind paying too much. But I realized right away, halfway through the first season, I had no future in this. And it was up or out for me, man. So I got out. The defining moment of, <laughs> of my WFL career was we were playing in Portland, Oregon. And the bus broke down from the airport on the way to the hotel. And we got picked up by a bunch of migrant workers in the back of a pickup truck, and I sat next to Ben Hawkins, who was a wide receiver for the Eagles for years. He used to have his chin strap dangling all the time. 
just before we got on the back of the pickup truck, after waiting by the broken down bus for an hour, we had to take a leak, and so we were on the side of these railroad tracks in Portland, Oregon, taking a leak. Ben Hawkins says, man, this is bull He said, I've been on the bubblegum cards already. Man, I don't need this anymore. Yeah. When I look back on it now, that just that's not reality. What I do now is reality. Sick people and dying people is reality. It hurt. Provide a good service here. It makes a difference here. And most of my joints still work. You know, my anterior cruciate was torn on my left leg, and it doesn't hurt me too bad. So you never did any surgery on that? You just kind of let Lifted it and got it back to where it was. I'm happy. I can't complain. Oh, yeah. See, man, you're going to be on television. <laughs> going home to me was coming back to Newport News, Virginia. I always knew I was going to be a teacher and a coach. I always knew that. This is Jason Victoria, who's going to Harvard University. First team all-state receiver. Since uh, I've been home 12 years now, I've been a high school football coach, and I think I've had a great turnout of developing student athletes. Rated E for everyone what it feels like when I start training threes. This is what you'll see when you bring it in my lane. This is what it feels like to be dunked on. This is what it feels like to play in the NBA. NBA 2K3. Sega! Now through Wednesday at Zales, take an extra 25% off, even on sale prices, like these $9.99 one-carat diamond stud earrings for just $6.99. At Zales, the diamond store. We need to make a collect call. The formula! Oh. Dial down the center with 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -T. It's free for you and cheap for them. It's alive! Save on every call. Dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. The new element, coming this December from Honda. In 1954, Paul Bear Bryant put 115 football players through hell. But those who survived lived to become champions. The Junction Boys, Saturday, December 14th, 9 p.m. on ESPN. Well, we talked with the guy who caught the first pass in WFL history, Vince Papali. And we talked with the guy who threw the last touchdown pass, Jim Fossil. We talked with dozens of people about their WFL experience. And what was most surprising was what we didn't hear. We didn't hear any bitterness. We didn't find anyone who felt betrayed. John Villapiano sent us a note that I think spoke for everyone. He said, upon agreeing to do the interview, so much anger resurfaced. But as we talked, all the great relationships and good times came back to my memory. It was the people. The positive, most positive experience to me was the people. And learning as a 22-year-old that there's, life isn't always fair and it's not always a utopia. That was a learning experience to me. I watched and I listened and I made sure that I never treated people the way that uh, some of our guys, well, most of our guys were treated by management. The scores and the statistics, the rosters and the records, all lost in time. But the WFL was never about those sort of things. What it was about and what it stood for was opportunity. To have gotten into the World Football League and, and to be a part of a team like that, to have made it the way I did as a pure free agent, pure walk-on, something I'll cherish forever because it took me to another level and that level has now given me um, a, a life that, that I love and, 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 and I'm the happiest man on this earth right now. And when I look at this, I, I kind of, I, I have tears of joy and having an, ex, an opportunity to showcase my talents and to help touch certain dreams and, and whether, the, whether those dreams was to get to the NFL or to do the thing that I'm doing today, the World Football League opened that door. 15,000 crowds blowing their approval here tonight. Ah, you might find some people who want to write this team off and kiss this team goodbye, but you won't find it at Memorial Stadium here tonight. They're standing in 
cheering right now as the Hornets dig in and do it again. The World Football League lasted only 22 months. But for the men who played in the league and those who followed it, it never really went away. It's still in their hearts and minds. And when you think about it, that's not such a bad legacy. ESPN Classic thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League. The NFL is online at NFL.com. For more, log on to ESPN.com. tough enough to drive a Tacoma? It happens on weekends in towns and cities across the country. Men and women go off to train as soldiers, then come back home to their families, to their friends, to their jobs, and to the rest of their lives. There are more than 180 ways to be a soldier in the Army Reserve, and you can train for many of them right where you live. Become an Army of One. Join the Army Reserve. Totally NASCAR is the only place to fuel your racing addiction five nights a week. Totally NASCAR, weeknights at 6. You've got to see this on Fox Sports Net. It's brought to you by Slime. At preservation distance, Jane and Roger spend every day saving tires. Their secret? Slime tire sealant. It's fast, safe, and the results? They're simply amazing. Imagine a world without flat. Slime your tires. Watching, you gotta see this. He's on a breakaway at the 40, the 35. He's to the cheers of 41,000. He's at the 25. He's sort of a straight line runner. He doesn't have many moves, huh? He really doesn't. He doesn't need him. You think anybody's going after him? Look at the crowd. The crowd's going crazy. It's a possum. Breaking to the outside. He smells the goal line. Touchdown. Sports television will never be the same. Good Lord. When it comes to the rush of bodyboarding, the wedge in Newport Beach, California is the ultimate hotspot for thrills. The huge south swells careen off the shore's rock jetty and explode into 20-foot waves with hundreds of thousands of pounds of water pressure. All of this power breaking in only two feet of water. At the wedge, anything can happen, and it usually does. Like the day veteran boarder David Law catches 27 feet worth of big air. Slowing down the tape, you can see David steer his board into the backwash coming off the jetty. The problem is, he has no idea how high he's about to go. David recalls his brush with the power of the Pacific. The momentum of the side wave and the backwash propelled me to the top of the lip, and it just flung me in the air. I was so high up there, I didn't know if I needed a parachute or what I was going to do to come down. I said my prayers, and I remember just coming down and landing and thanking God for the landing and making sure everything was still intact. My ribs were there, and you know, I had a little bit of headache, and the whole beach was just erupted in cheers, and... Uh, 
felt really good. It was this bodyboarder's 14 years of surfing that helped to keep him from drowning. If I would have messed up, my neck would have been snapped, probably pretty much into a twig and uh, washed up on the beach, paralyzed or something. Despite the dangers, David says catching that gigantic wave was a sensation he'll never forget. That was definitely one of my best aerial maneuvers I've ever done in my life, though, I'll say that. side of winter games. has over 90,000 agent locations worldwide, so chances are there's one near you. I just picked up cash for an air conditioner. Getting here was no sweat. Wherever you need them, Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. In a world where two was special and three was unheard of, one man dared to say... What? You gotta be insane! Four unique tastes push the cheese extreme quesadilla into the fourth dimension of flavor. Is on with mozzarella, pepper jack, cheddar, and nacho cheese sauce form a taste to die for. So good. Makes you want to be bad. Don't miss the new cheese extreme quesadilla. For 4D flavor, think outside the bun. 7-Up is proud to sponsor you talking. And for when they get thirsty, I've provided plenty of 7-Up. Because I care about the kids. 7-Up is now uh, proud to sponsor you swimming. Kick those legs, Tommy. we'd whet your appetite with some of the wackiest cold weather sports who ever hit the slopes. First up, how about a little kayaking? Snow kayaking, that is. When the snow falls in Colorado, locals whip out their boats and oars and paddle off for some downhill thrills. And spills. To take the top prize, rowers have to sail through a tricky slalom course without wiping out. This cameraman learns the hard way just how challenging staying afloat at 30 miles an hour can be. We can only hope these kayaks are more seaworthy than they are snowworthy. Now, if kayaks aren't your speed, here's the scoop on another wet and wild sport. 
Welcome to the World Shovel Race Championship in Angel Fire, New Mexico. To compete here, just plant your bottom firmly in a grain shovel and take off. The course is a grueling thousand feet long with a 400 foot vertical drop. As you can see from this helmet cam, it's a very bumpy ride. Well, the course is a little rough. Some of these scoops scoot along at a speedy 50 miles an hour. And best of all, this sport isn't just for the big boys. There's even a little scoops category for junior racers who dig the shovel racing. And finally, to the Arapaho Basin in Colorado for the legendary Cardboard Derby. Here the motto is, if you can slide it, you can ride it. Well, this is a great time. Everybody has fun. Everybody uh, sees some carnage and uh, some people that work real hard. Riders come in all shapes and sizes. The only rule, vehicles have to be constructed from nothing more than cardboard, paper, glue, tape, and string. This year's favorite, the Empire fell further than it actually slid. As you can see, that doesn't happen very often. That was scary. I don't want to do that very often. That was, that was very nerve-wracking. Oh, well, there's always next year. And may we suggest a little more super glue. you got to see this. We'll return in a moment. Would I go back to Arlington Lexus in Palatine? Without question. No doubt about it. This service is impeccable. Absolutely. Great prices and fantastic service. Definitely. I even told my neighbor about their service. Get the Super Sporty 2002 IS 300 for just $3.99 a month. Superior service without exception. Bob Rorman's Arlington Lexus in Palatine. One block west of Route 53 on Dundee Road. the voice stream wireless contest here's tom waddle come on i don't need voice stream to hit a home run aha fastball huh no mr waddle that was my changeup. i guess i do need voice stream to hit a home run visit any voice stream wireless dealer to scratch and win thousands of great prizes including motorola v60 phones or a caribbean vacation plus sign up now for voice stream wireless service and get 3,000 whenever minutes for just 49.99 a month get a home run with voice stream wireless today at AT&T Broadband, we can turn you on to loads of TV channels. And with our interactive program guide, you can always find what you want to watch easily. Discover great movies, lots of sports, travel, news, exciting entertainment, everything you're looking for. Call today and get a great deal on AT&T Digital Cable. AT&T Broadband, cable television, high-speed cable internet, digital phone service. The power of three. That's 1995 with late fees from your last rental. Oh, but I had five days to return those. Well, no, sir. You rented four movies. One five-day rental, three two-day rentals. You returned the five day at 10.30 a.m. on the fourth day. You the one day on the third day. So, as I said, you owe 1995. Plus tax. There's a better way. With in-demand pay-per-view on AT&T Digital Cable, there are no returns or late fees. Just point, pick, and enjoy the best movies, sports, and events. In-demand pay-per-view from AT&T Broadband. It's the better way. Sports as you know. If you want more, you gotta see this. Visit our website at foxsports.com slash YGST. Log on to find out what's coming up next week, as well as to see more exclusive You Gotta See This sports moments. You'll also find out how to contact us if you have video you think we should see.
quick. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a flat track, so you got to have a good handling race car and a car that can be smooth all day long and, and work the bottom. I'm Chris Devota, and this is Totally NASCAR. The Winston Cup drivers are back in New Hampshire on Friday the 13th, hoping this time around...